Here we are on number one from 2015. This is calculus A, B, and B, C. Now these problems I like, but they seem to take a while. So hang in here, we'll get through this. I know it's kind of tedious, we've done similar problems over and over, but your goal, again, is not to know what steps to take, but why you are taking the steps you are taking. Understand the whys, and that's the big takeaway for you. There's a rate water flows into, and that's R of T. So I'm going to write that down to organize my thoughts. So what is, I'm going to do this. I'm going to put this in my calculator. Let y1 equal r of t. And I should have pre-entered that. I'm going to do it right now. But also, what is r of t? So I'm just going to summarize to myself. That's the rate inwards. And they give me units, cubic feet per hour. Rate in is cubic feet per hour, that's the units, and that's from zero to eight. So I'm gonna go ahead and write that down. Let me enter that in my calculator real quick. To get that fraction, t squared over 35, remember you do alpha y equals and hit enter, and you get that nice pretty fraction. Just makes life a little easier, less chance of making a mistake. So I have that entered in as y1. Let's keep reading here. The pipe is partially blocked, allowing water to drain out the other end of the pipe at a rate, and this is the rate out, is this. So on top here, for my notes, let y2 equal d of t, and that's the rate of water leaving, so I'm gonna call it out and it's the same time interval and all that stuff. And one more piece of information they give us, 30 cubic feet of water at the time t equals zero. They haven't told me a function for the amount of water, so in scanning through the questions, they don't either. So my last note, I'm gonna crumb up with my own function. Let a of t equal the amount of water in the pipe. Therefore, A of zero is 30 cubic feet. So that's that statement right here. So all the information is in my calculator or in red above. So I don't have to reread that. It's gonna save you so much time not having to reread and think about what it's saying. You've already processed. So we're gonna do part A. How many cubic feet of water flow into? They're not asking how much water there is in the pipe, how much flows in. And this is fundamental theorem of calculus, one of the forms. If you integrate the rate of water flowing in, it tells you the change in the amount of water that's float, flown in, flowed in. So part A is pretty straightforward. We're gonna integrate the rate of water in. Look, I have it written there. I know what it is. I don't have to think about it. And that's from zero to eight. And I'm gonna do a squiggly equal because we're gonna round off. So I'm gonna have to punch that in my calculator. As I do that, I get 76.570. Done. That's it. Let's go to part B. Is the amount of water in the pipe increasing or decreasing? So that key word there, increasing, decreasing, your ears should pick up there. You should think, I know that. If the derivative is positive, it's increasing. If the derivative is negative, the amount of water is decreasing. So I need a formula for the amount of water. And then if I have that, all I have to do is take the derivative and see if it's positive or negative. So that's what I'm gonna do next. I'm actually entering the drainage function as y2, as I already stated that. I 
hope I put it in right or it's going to mess things up badly. I think I put it right. So we need a formula for the amount of water. So then we can take the derivative and that will tell us if A is increasing or decreasing. So A of T, which we defined earlier right here as the amount of water in the pipe. So that's going to be the start amount plus the amount you add minus the amount you take or leave, which is start amount, 30 cubic feet. How do you find out how much was added? You integrate the rate at which it was added. Since I'm using t there, I can't use t again in my function, so I'm just going to use x. It's a dummy variable. You can put any variable you want, but my calculator works in x's, so I like that. If you want to see how much left or went out, you integrate the rate at which water goes out, which is d of t, but I used t already, so I'm just going to use x. Bam. That's the formula for the amount of water in the pipe at any time. And to find out if that is increased or decreased, I need to take the derivative. And the derivative of 30 is 0. And this is where we're going to have Fun. This is another aspect of the fundamental theorem of calculus. If you take the derivative of an integral, the bottom number is a constant, and the top number is the variable, because it's dA dt, t is our variable, all you do is plug that in. Now, if this wasn't t, but a function of t, you'd still plug it in, but using the chain rule, you'd have to multiply by the derivative of that. Same thing is going to happen here. So my answer, quickly would be r of t minus d of t. Now I need to find a prime at, 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 3. So in my calculator, that's going to be y1 at 3 minus y2 at 3. You don't have to write that. I just did that so you can see what's going on. You could just, yeah, you could just do this step without writing it out because I've already described what A is there, A prime. So A prime at 3, clearly you're just plugging 3 in. Or instead of that, you could also do R of 3 and D. That's the same thing because I've already defined Y1 and Y2 as R and D. So that's why you could also put the y1 and y2. If you hadn't stated that up here, you can't use y's over here. But since I've defined my y's, I could use it. The only reason I would do that, because in my brain, it's easier to see what I'm doing in my calculator. But once you plug those into your calculator, you should get this. And you see a prime is negative. Therefore, you know the amount of water is decreasing. So I'm going to state it this way. When t equals 3, the amount of water in the pipe is decreasing because a prime at 3 is negative. So that's the justification. If the derivative is negative, then the function is decreasing, and clearly a prime is negative. Now, if you look at the scoring guidelines, their justification was r of 3 is less than d of 3. Well, that's the same thing. Just another way of saying the same thing. If this is smaller than that, clearly it's going to come out negative. So you could have found r of 3 and d of 3 separately, and made the same statement they made, or you can just state what I did, but logically this should make sense. If the rate at which water is going into the pipe is smaller than the rate at which water is draining, clearly the level of water is going to decrease. So logically, it also makes sense. All right, we have two more parts. I'm going to leave right there, because we're going to need, actually right there, we're going to need some information. I want to erase some stuff if I can without, ooh, ooh, pretty good. We're going to need that 
formula for the amount of water in the pipe in here. So keywords we're going to look at. And again, if you look at calculus, you just if you know your basic justifications, you can apply it to any context. And so the keyword here is minimum. Whoa, that was bad. Minimum. Your thought should say, oh, minimum. That occurs at critical points or endpoints. You know that as your basic justification. So your thought now is, I need to find the critical points. The endpoints are easy. Those are given. And we know it's a closed interval, so you have to include those. If it was an open interval, you'd be kind of in trouble because there might not be. But I don't think you have that situation on the AP test. So to find the minimum, I have to find the critical points. So for part C, the first step would be to find the critical points. But up above, I already have the derivative is R of T minus D of T. A critical point is when that is zero. Let me add the D of T to the other side. So how do you find when, so two ways. You could graph in your calculator R of T minus D of T, Y1 minus Y2, and see when it crosses the X axis or use the zero function. Or you can find when the functions are equal to and use the intersect function. So I'm going to graph those on my calculator. So with me, if you turn your calculator on, you can pause. I'm going to hit window. It tells me my t goes from 0 to 8. So x max is 0, x max is 8. Now my y's are trickier. I don't know these, I don't know how far up I have to go, but let's look at these functions. It might give us an idea. This, what's the maximum a sign can get is one. So one times 20 is the maximum. So I know this won't go over 20. So I'm just gonna make my y's go from zero to 20. Now, if you didn't notice that, you could just graph from negative 10 to 10. If you can't see your graphs on that range, just increase it until you find it. So I'm gonna graph that. There is my rate n. It's going up, 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 up. Up, 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 up. Wow, it's kind of slow. Up, 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 up. And then there, oh, bam. Did you see that? They crossed right there. So you do second trace and you do intersect. Again, it's going to have a blinky bob on your, it asks you, is this the first curve where the blinky bob is? Yes, I hit enter. And then the blinky bob on the red, is that your second curve that you want to intersect? Yes, I'd enter. I put that blinky bob anywhere near the intersection. I get the answer. You should all get 0.327 something. I'm going to say at A equal 0.327.1658. I'm going to go to my home screen by doing second quit. I'm going to just do store alpha A or X store alpha A, sorry x store alpha a to get the x you just hit the variable button next to alpha and now that number is stored i don't have to punch it into my calculator it's going to make my life mucho easier row so if we know the maximum can occur at critical points or endpoints and we want to know when the amount of water is maximum how do we do that we don't check for relative maximums because that doesn't tell us absolute maximums what we're going to do is we are going to find the amount of water at the beginning, the amount of water at our critical point, and the amount of water at the end point. And the beginning, zero, is pretty easy. It's given to us as 30, I believe. We wrote that down right here. So we're just going to put a 30 there. Now, to find A of zero, we're going to use this formula right here. I'm just going to punch up my calculator, replace the t's with a. So 30 plus math 9, 0, 2, alpha a, alpha trace to get my y function, y1, dx. And then I'm going to minus math 9 to get my integral, 0 to a again. And then alpha trace to get my y2 and I hit enter, I get 27.9645 something.
Now here's the beauty. You don't have to re-enter all of that stuff. Hopefully you've been practicing this. If you hit your up arrow back to the equation you just entered, hit enter, you can edit that. You can replace those A's by using the arrows with eight. And if you do that and hit enter, you should get 48.543686. Those are all cubic feet. It didn't ask for units. Technically, you don't need that. I'm going to put it there. Now, you just look at these, and you can find the max and min. The min clearly is at A, 27.96. The max is clearly at 8, 48.54 something. What were they asking us for? They're asking us for the minimum amount of water. So we need to come up with our final statement. The, and is asking the time or the minimum amount. Look, at what time? They're not asking the minimum amount, they're asking for the time. The pipe has a minimum amount of water at t equal a. We're done. Now you could write out the whole 0.3271658 or 0.327 hours, is it? Hours, you could, but that's a lot of extra writing, not necessary. Part D. Hopefully it's not taking too long. We're cranking through this problem. So we're told that the pipe can hold a maximum amount of water of 50 cubic feet before overflowing. And it says, after the eight hours, water continues to flow into and out of the pipe at the given rates until the pipe begins to overflow. Write, but do not solve an equation involving one or more integrals that gives a time t when the pipe will begin to overflow. So the pipe will begin to overflow when the amount of water reaches 50. So that's going to happen when A of T equals 50. Now, I've already defined A of T above. I think that would be enough to get the points. But to be safe, I'm going to take this equation that I found earlier and fill it in. I just want to be sure, especially if I have time. If you don't have time and your time's running out, just write that and submit. But if you have time, go ahead and write out this whole thing. Zero to T, R of X, DX minus zero to T, d of x dx equals 50. I'm done. That's my answer. The college board combines these two. You can. I like keeping it separate so you can kind of understand what each part represents. But we are done with this problem. All right. This is hump day. We have one more to work over the weekend. Hang in there. Keep persevering. If you have any questions or any, you need anything from me, let me know and I'll do my best to answer and help you. All right? Bye.